Designers Café. conceptual mistake. A structural system does not separate between each unit. Usually the span of structure encompasses three or four units. I, I or maybe more. Well, I understand, but I don't see why that has to necessarily be the case. Especially it it necessarily be the case. It has to be the case. I understand that I don't have to, but I think it's important for the, you know, it's wrong. the resolution. It's fine. It's wrong. Of the why is it wrong? Tell us why it's wrong. Economically. It's not wrong. Systems. We could critique his whole project in terms of no, the economy. No, but you that Basically, there are these walls. In terms of his diagram. Yes. It's Those have to be every other third wall is structural. I mean, then that, that completely ruins the, the areas. It does not ruin anything. It wasn't necessary to have that conversation. The point was made, and then that's it. I understood the point. They understood my point. I thought he understood my point. I thought that should be the end of it, and then there were more important things to talk about, and other people that had to talk to them, you know, and still talking about it for 20 minutes. One one thing that I always have an issue with is like students get so frustrated if they don't have a good critique. I think they I think they misinterpret what a good critique is. I mean, by definition, it's a critique. It's a criticism. So if somebody go, if you go into a critique and all the critics, all they can do is blow hot air up your ass and tell you how great the project looks, well, that's still not, a, to, me, to me, that's not a good critique. They didn't criticize anything. To me, a good criticism is, is if you can inspire enough thought based on what they see and what they hear. If it inspires enough thought, then they will, they will criticize. Not criticize in, in the sense of attacking. They're going to criticize because whatever you showed them inspired enough thought that they have their own opinion about the thing now. That's a criticism. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with you because I have a feeling it wouldn't be productive. We could go on all night. We could. I know that's not the point. You would stop and listen occasionally. You'd be, we'd, we'd be able to find, you know, some resting spot here where, where we're kind of talking about the same thing and you allow us to help you. The other thing I think that is sometimes very negative is the idea that the student should be trained to do a sales pitch in, in this jury process. I mean, I think that really probably the student should at first be silent, you know, and the, and the, the jurors should really start to ask questions about the drawings and uh, try to understand the, the project in a more Socratic way, you know, rather than this sales pitch followed by criticism. If you're a smart architecture student, you're listening very closely because you're not only interested in how that work is, is coming out of you, but also how other people are seeing it. The best architects, in my view, are the ones who bring a coherent view of the world to design. Those are the folks that become the best architects in the sense that they're the ones that progress the profession, innovate, create new ideas. The most important thing about being an architect is learning how to think clearly. You have to be able to think clearly to practice architecture. There's a tendency to see people as singular. If you're artistic, you're not practical. If you're practical, you're not artistic. That, that, that's totally preposterous. I mean, architecture is embedded in both worlds. And if anything, architecture is the um, connective tissue between these two kind of spheres. And it'd be impossible to live in one or the other. One, you'd be practical and never produce a piece of work of any interest. The other, you'd be producing work that has no meaning or no connectivity. I think d design requires a certain kind of smartness that holds those schizophrenic views simultaneously uh, in, in one's thinking. Even as a young person, you, you know whether you can do that. And, and a as you mature, it's quite rewarding to have those, those opposing views in your mind at all, at all times. There's not just one role for an architect. There are all different kinds of 
contributions an architect can make in the, in, in the culture. The question of what's a good architect, I think that there are many different perspectives that come at a project as it's developing. And what's important for the architect is to be able to listen to people outside of themselves and take that and then give something of themselves to a project and make something incredibly unique and wonderful. It has to be a person who's, who's really willing to learn in a way that architects need to learn, which is they need to learn something every day for the rest of their lives. You've got to be, in a sense, uh, kind of driven by that in a sense kind of inner force but I think you always you, you, you also have to have the ability to kind of work through something and to be able to look at particular problems and be able to kind of listen and learn and examine with with great patience some of those questions so again it's a kind of left brain right brain kind of dichotomy that is you know constantly those demands are constantly placed on you as an architect there are other disciplines that bring other things to the table, but I think our ability to envision or imagine something that is not there, it, it's almost spooky to people. They, 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 this notion that you can look at a site or look at a parking lot and see a building there, I think it's, it's, extraordinary, it's an extraordinary skill. And we are one of the few disciplines that can do that. I would not trade for anything the skill set that I learned in school because uh, it's very, very, very unique um, to our discipline. And that's what we bring to the table.